Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let us solve the problems given in the model question paper of basic electronics subject. In this model question paper, the first problem they have given is on Zener diode as a voltage regulator. Here they have given the Zener diode as a breakdown voltage of 10 volts. Means the breakdown voltage of this Zener diode is 10 volts that is Vz. It is supplied from a voltage source varying between 20 to 40 volts. Means the input voltage V in is varied between 20 to 40 volts. So this is V in minimum is 20, V in maximum that is 40. In a series with a resistance of 820 ohms, this is 820 ohm. Using a ideal Zener diode model, obtain minimum and maximum Zener currents. We need to find out IZ minimum. Uh, which is what is the minimum amount of IZ and what is the maximum amount of IZ it will allow. So these are the different first we know that the total current I will be equal to IZ plus IL but here I am neglecting IL why because there is no load here load resistance is not given so I becomes IZ so I can write it as IZ is equal to V in minus VZ divided by RS so we know that two different values for V in V in is equal to V in minimum is 20 volts. If you substitute 20 minus Vz, they have given it as 10 volts divided by RS is 820. We are going to get 12.1 milliamps is the current minimum current flowing through the Zener diode. And similarly for V in maximum, V in maximum is 40 volts. It is varied from 20 to 40. So we need to take 40 volts now. 40 minus 10 divided by 820. This gives 36.5 milliamps means V in minimum V in minimum is 20 accordingly we are going to get 12.1 milliamps as current similarly V in maximum we have as 40 accordingly we are going to get 36.5 milliamps as current flowing through the Zener diode this carries 7 marks you need to write the circuit and mention the values present over there and the next problem is on full wave rectifier one problem will be there on rectifier for sure. So this full wave rectifier input is from 30, 0, 30 of a transformer means primary to secondary. The load and diode forward resistances are 100 ohm and 10 ohm respectively means load resistance is 100 ohm, diode forward resistance is 10 ohm respectively. Calculate the average load current, average load voltage and rectifier efficiency. These are the three parameters we need to calculate. So this is the rectifier circuit full wave rectifier and here are the given uh, terms and we need to find out load current load voltage and efficiency first we need to calculate vm vm is equal to vm is the peak voltage vrms into root 2 already they have given the values in rms only 30 0 30 if they are going to give like this th these are rms values so 30 into root 2 we need to take so 40 42.426 volt is the peak voltage now if we calculate average current that is the dc current idc is equal to 2 im divided by pi this is the standard expression for full wave rectifier 2 by pi into we don't know im the current is not given so we need to calculate im by using vm divided by rf plus rl here the forward resistance is also given so rf plus rl we need to take so 2 by pi into 42.426 is Vm divided by Rf is 10 and RL is 100. We are going to get IDC as 0.2455 amps. This is what the first thing they have asked to calculate that is average load current. So let us calculate IRMS also. Is uh, IRMS is the DC current into root 2. Root 2 times the DC current that is RMS value. So 0.3471. Now the second parameter they are set to calculate is VDC means average load voltage VDC is equal to 2 Vm divided by pi similarly as this we are calculating VDC now we know what is Vm substitute Vm that is 42.426 divided by pi this is VDC we are going to get 27.009 volts now we need to calculate the efficiency efficiency is that output power divided by input power so output power expression P is equal to I square R. So IDC square divided by RL. P in is IRMS square RF plus RL. 
forward resistance also they have given so idc we know we have calculated here square into 100 divided by i rms is 0.3471 square into 100 plus 10 that is 110 so we are getting 0.4547 if you put it in the percentage it is 45.47 percent this is the problem on full wave rectifier the next problem is on operational amplifier here they have given the question like this design the circuit diagram for the output voltage v0 is equal to -5 into 0.1 into v1 plus 0.2 into v2 plus 10 into v3 so here this v0 contains three terms -5 into 0.1 into v1 this is one term plus 0.2 into v2 this is the second voltage second term i can call 10 into v3 so we have three terms which are added up it means it is a summer where we will be having three input voltages to add or sum so these are corresponds to the weights weights so weights in the sense rf divided by r1 and rf divided by r2 similarly rf divided by r3 are the values they have given here 0.1 0.2 and 10 so if i compare the given expression with the summer expression this is the expression for the three input summer this is what we are going to get rf since they have given it as outside i am taking this as rf rf is minus 5 so we are uh, sorry rf is plus 5 ohm and if we compare these two 1 by r1 is 0.1 1 by 0.1 that is r1 so it is 10 ohm 1 by r2 that is 0.2 it is 20 1 by r3 if you take that is 10 it is 0.1 so we are going to get r1 r2 r3 now they said to design the circuit diagram for this output so we need to write the circuit now for this circuit r1 we need to choose as 10 ohm r2 we need to choose as 20 ohm r3 as 0.1 ohm and rf is the feedback resistance it is 5 ohm v0 is the expression what we are going to get over here so this is with v1 v2 v3 at inverting terminal remember this inverting terminal why because they have given minus here this is the problem with respect to the op amp summer the next problem again they have given the output voltage they have given output voltage v0 is equal to 2 integration of v1 into dt plus 0.4 dv2 divided by dt this is the second term or the second voltage and they have given 10 v3 now again if you compare this with the summer expression or generally i am going to write the summer expression in terms of y1 y2 y3 the three outputs so here y1 becomes this y2 is this y3 is this so i have written y1 y2 y3 separately so these three y1 y2 y3 are the outputs of three op amps let me take one op amp this output is y1 let me take one more op amp this generating y2 let me take one more op amp this generating y3 right so the first term consisting of integration so this is this first op amp is my integrator so integrator output i am getting as integration so the second term having dv2 by dt so this is differentiator so this is differentiator this is the third one 10 into v3 we have so this is my inverting amplifier or non inverting amplifier also we can take and do so now let me compare these things with my standard expressions of integrator for the, for the y1 differentiator for y2 inverting amplifier for y3 now you can see here this is the integrator circuit which is generating minus y1 since it is an inverting integrator i am going to get the output as minus so i have taken it as minus y1 is equal to minus 2 integration v1 dt this is given this is the standard expression output expression right if you compare these two you can see v1 dt integration of v1 dt is same here this two is 1 divided by r1 into c so 1 divided by r1 c is equal to 2 and i am assuming here value of r1 let my r1 be some 10 kilo ohm if this has 10 kilo ohm 
I need to take C as 50 microfarad I can calculate. So this is what R and C values of this integrator. Similarly next differentiator term is there that is y2 is equal to minus 0.4 dv2 divided by dt. Why I am taking minus here is that I will be having minus sign at the output of the differentiator and integrator. In the problem they have not given why because these three outputs will be given to one more pop amp where that will nullify the negative symbol. Okay. Here again if you compare 0.4 is the value of RF and C. Let me take RF as 10 kilo ohm again. This is my assumption. You can take any value and calculate C. C is equal to 40 microfarad. Now this is the value of C and this is RF. Next term will be 10 V3. This is I am taking it as minus 10 V3 because of inverting amplifier. So Y3 is equal to minus RF by R1 into V3 is the standard expression. RF by R1 is 10. So if I assume RF as 10K, R1 is 1K. So this is how we can relate three quantities into three different op amp configurations and we can put the final circuit like this. From here I am getting the first term uh, Y1 through integrator. This is integrator. This is differentiator. This is inverting amplifier. So Y1, Y2, Y3. Since these are minus, this is also minus, this is also minus. I am given to the inverting amplifier. This will nullify the minus sign and the a given expression in the problem will be having plus sign so it satisfies so this is how we can solve the problem of summer integrated with this integrator differentiator and inverting amplifier this carries seven marks the next problem is on digital electronics part number conversion solve 725.25 with base 10 to binary as well as hexadecimal here I have taken 725 and start dividing by 2. We are going to get the remainders. Start writing from bottom to top. And for the decimal part, 0.25 into 2, that is 0.5. I am taking this 0. 0.5 into 2, 1.0. I am taking this out. So this we need to take from top to bottom. It is 0 0.01. So this is what for the 725. Now we need to add this and this. We are going to get the final value like this. This is how we can convert decimal to binary. And the second uh, part here is we need to convert this binary to hexadecimal that I have not done. I will do it here. Let me take 10110101010101.01. This is the term what we get here. We need to convert that into hexadecimal. So from the decimal point we need to start grouping four four terms. This four this 4. Here we have no 4 terms. We need to pad to zeros. Now this becomes 10 zero means it is 2. Here 1101 1 means 8, 4, 2, 1. 8 plus 4 it is 12. 12 plus 1 it is 13. 13 means 10 is A. 11 means B. 12 is C. 13 is D. So it is D. 0101 0, 1, 0, 1. it is 4 plus 1 it is 5. So from decimal part, we need to group like this. We need to pad zeros over here. 100, it is 4. So this is 4. So 2D5.4 is the value in hexadecimal. Now take the second question that is B. Uh, they have given this binary number. We need to convert that into octal and hexadecimal. To convert that into octal, we need to group 3 bits. So if you group 3, 3 together, we get 74761. Similarly, group 4 4 terms and we need to start grouping from this side. So, here 3 terms are there. We need to pad 1 extra 0. We got 79F1. Then, the next question, which I have discussed this already in the previous video. So, here we need to build the equation which is given y is equal to ab plus cd plus e to realize using NAND gates and NOR gates. Using NAND gates, we can easily do it. The given expression, take the double bar and try to reduce one bar. So we are going to get in terms of NAND gate expressions. You can see here A into B whole bar, C into D whole bar is the NAND gate expression. E bar can be done by using 
and shorting the inputs. Complete bar will be there. So we need to use one more NAND gate that gives the complete bar. Similarly, using NOR gates, we need to do this. Again, take double bar, try to reduce one bar. This leads to A into B whole bar into C into D whole bar into E bar. But here, we need to have for the, for the NOR, uh, NOR gate, we need to have A plus B whole bar kind of expressions. So I am simplifying this bar again, this, this internal bar again. We are going to get A bar plus B bar into C bar plus D bar into E bar. Now this term also, this bar is also eliminating. So A bar plus B bar whole bar plus C bar plus D bar whole bar plus E. So this is the expression we are going to get to implement using NOR gates. Now everywhere we will be having plus signs. This is one group with plus we will be having other group. It means we are Ring these two. But we are supposed to use only NOR gates. If you implement this, it will be up to this stage and we are going to get a bar over here. But in the question, we have AB plus CD plus E. So we need to have one more NOR gate here that eliminates the bar. This will be act as a NOR gate so that we are going to get AB plus CD plus E. Then the subtraction of binary numbers using 1's complement and 2's complement method. Here the first thing is using 1's complement method. In the question they have given we need to subtract 101 from 1101. It means 1101 minus 101. So this is the actual question is. So let me treat this as A and this as B. We need always we need to remember take the complement of the B term. So take one's complement of this term B0101. Here it is 3 bits. Here it is 4 bits. So I am equating this to 4 bits that is 0101. Always these two should be with equal number of bits. So 0101 if you take one's complement we need to invert all these bits. It becomes 1010. Now I need to add this 1010 with A. A is 1101. So if you add these two 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1 again, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. In 1's complement subtraction, if you get a carry, we need to add this again to the result. So, 0, 1, 1, 1 plus 1 gives 1, 0, 0, 0. Similarly, if you do using 2's complement method, again, we need to take 1, 1, 0, 1 as A and 0, 1, 0, 1 as B. Now, take the 2's complement of B term b is 0101 take the 2's complement it becomes first take 1's complement then adding 1 it becomes the 2's complement so it is 1011 so we need to add 1011 with a now a is 1101 so if we add these two 1 plus 1 is 0 carry 1 1 plus 1 is 0 again carry 1 again 1 plus 1 is 0 carry 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 11 one. so here again carry is generated in this case what we need to do in 2's complement subtraction we need to neglect the carry if it is generated we need to neglect this carry so this four bits are the outputs but here in 1's complement method if we get the carry we need to add the carry to the result then only we are going to get the final result this is what few of the problems given in the model question paper these are very important problems likewise you may get problems in your exam Thank you.